All right, let's move now to Eswatini with reports of violence and instability for over a week now. Pro-democracy protests led to a harsh clampdown by authorities in the kingdom and a media blackout as well. Human rights groups and journalists in the country have reported the army has been conducting house-to-house -house raids. They say at least eight people have been killed. Opposition movements say between 40 and 70 people may have been killed. Well, let's speak now to Eswatini government's Commerce, Industry and Trade Minister Manoba Komalo. Minister, thank you so much for your time. I wonder if you could give us an update on um, how stable things are in the kingdom right now. Thank you very much uh, and thanks for hosting me. Uh, the situation in the kingdom uh, has improved uh, significantly uh, this week. Uh, since uh, Saturday, to be specific, versus uh, last week. And um, uh, yesterday, our acting Prime Minister announced that uh, normal business uh, operations are resuming. We are still struggling with supplies because of uh, interruptions in the supply chain, but uh, we are slowly uh, catching up. How many people have died in the protests? Right now, our official records reflect uh, 27 for a variety of uh, reasons. Uh, certain people died uh, whilst uh, uh, structures were being burnt and they were trapped inside. Uh, other people died when uh, owners of properties and businesses were protecting themselves. And uh, in severe situations where some of the uh, uh, people that were doing some of the uh, damage uh, they were armed. Um, there was an exchange uh, of fire um, uh, with the police. Uh, right now, 27 uh, in total have been reported, uh, unfortunately, and we are very saddened. Uh, uh, this is not something that has happened in the country before, and we have got up about 128 uh, people that have been reported. Uh, being treated in uh, various uh, health institutions. Uh, we have spoken to a number of groups over the past week. Um, one of the uh, groups telling us uh, that they've heard reports of the army going door to door in Manzini uh, and essentially shooting uh, people who are seen to be uh, troublemakers. What's your response to that? Uh, that is patently false. Um, the army was brought in because uh, the, the, the peaceful protests, uh, we had 51 of them where petitions were being delivered, uh, people asking for constitutional reforms and people were asking for service delivery on the main. Uh, was then hijacked when um, we still had about eight petitions to go um, uh, because we have 59 members of parliament and each of these petitions was being delivered. Uh, to them. So 51 were delivered and then the violence started when we had about eight to go and it was orchestrated, it was planned and the army was brought in to protect uh, national assets that, that were the target of the violence. So why did you shut the borders? Why did you shut down the internet? Why did you essentially impose a media blackout uh, if the army was acting completely above board? It has raised grave concern uh, within the region and beyond. Without context, those concerns are justified. But here's the context. We then discovered uh, uh, just before the 24th of June that uh, the peaceful uh, protests, 51 of them, that had happened up until that point, had been hijacked. And uh, there were uh, mercenaries that were coming from neighboring countries uh, that were bringing in firearms and bringing in money and resources and strategies that are foreign to this country uh, to hijack um, uh, these protests and start a campaign of violence and disruption, which they ultimately carried out last week. Um, we discovered that this was all planned. Uh, in social media platforms and internet um, websites uh, that were undercover. Uh, so in trying to isolate uh, the threat uh, for the security and protection of our people, um, uh, we, we then had to go through a series of elimination which affected internet availability. But I'm glad to say we're very close to now isolating those sites 
and, and restoring everything fully because it has been a gradual restoration of various platforms, beginning with business platforms, uh, banking platforms, the internet um, it was fully restored as of Friday last week. Um, uh, but right now, uh, there's uh, still a bit of a struggle in isolating the social media platforms um, uh, that are um, the high activity for the foreign agents that have infiltrated our security system here uh, and are causing uh, the damage that you saw last week, where 3,000 uh, rand worth uh, of properties, private businesses, infrastructure, utilities, uh, was destroyed. 5,000 people without jobs and 1,000 mm. SMEs do not know uh, how to restart their businesses as we speak. And that's what we were dealing with. Uh, and unfortunately, we did not have uh, the expertise to isolate the threat, and, and uh, we've been gradually working at it. It was never intended to be a blackout. Thank you so much, Eswatini Government's Commerce, Industry and Trade Minister Manoba Komalo saying there was a reason for the blackout. He says mercenaries infiltrating Eswatini, agents trying to cause destruction. I'm sure there's more uh, that we will hear on the story in the days and weeks to come.